Hi, hello, and welcome. One of the primary benefits of a ketogenic diet is the fact that it has lower insulin. And as many a guru plant their flag of ketogenosity, let's pretend that's a word, it stands to reason that they'd harp on this one aspect as a reason why the ketogenic diet is a superior method for dropping body fat, as it has the lowest levels of insulin, the fat storage hormone. In this content, I'd like to take a moment to explain to you why the ketogenic diet is indeed better for lowering insulin, but still may not be better for fat loss. If that intrigues you, hear me out. Learn your body, a science-based education. I'm going to be explaining a sizable amount of physiology and some basic metabolism, so it makes sense that you'd want to know why I'm even qualified to open my mouth. I'm a PhD student in molecular medicine. I hold my master's degree in exercise physiology. I have a nutrition science background from university. And finally, I spent a number of years in a metabolism laboratory working as a scientist. And I am still a scientist. That out of the way, let's understand what is going on between keto, fat loss, and insulin. In previous content, I've explained how insulin does lead to greater storage of fat molecules in the fat cells. Since carbohydrate nutrient consumption increases insulin secretion from your pancreas, it makes great sense that reducing carbohydrates would decrease insulin, thereby removing the break on fat molecule release from the fat cells. As the ketogenic diet does exactly that, it's an excellent example. And it is true, the ketogenic diet does reduce insulin levels, and yet, when compared to other diets, it does not yield better fat loss results, which is puzzling because it contradicts what many keto gurus espouse, reduce insulin and fat will melt off. Yet we see it evidenced that high carbohydrate diets also melt fat to an equal degree. So what in the world is going on? Have we been lied to about insulin? No, we haven't but it requires an education on metabolism to understand the physiology. So give me a minute of your time and I will explain. Chiefly, the answer comes down to a more powerful player than insulin, metabolism. Your body requires X amount of energy to exist and more if it is to function as intended. So you need X energy and your body cells liberate that energy when they metabolize nutrients like carbohydrate molecules and fat molecules. If you do not consume sufficient amounts of energy containing nutrients, your body is left in a deficit to fulfill its immutable metabolic need for energy. So it pulls the necessary nutrients from your fat cells by liberating fat molecules into the bloodstream to be taken up by more metabolically active tissues, cells, to be metabolized for energy. This fills in the gap between what you have ingested in your food and what your body needs, which is more than what you've provided. All right, that's a general understanding of the bodily circumstance, but the bottom line is your metabolic drive is unmovable in this scenario and must be supplied with the necessary energy or you die. Given the option, your body sucks up fat from the bloodstream and liberates its needed energy. Yet carbohydrates increase insulin, which inhibits the release of fat molecules, and the ketogenic diet reduces insulin. So wouldn't that mean that it increases fat release? Well, sort of. In the small picture, that's all true. In the big picture, taking metabolism into account, it evens out. When we consume carbohydrates, our insulin rises reducing fat metabolism as the cells turn their attention to using carbohydrates for their energy. However, if we underconsume nutrients as a whole, carbohydrate or fat nutrients, our metabolism still requires the full amount of energy to sustain itself. So comparing the amount of insulin that would have been secreted if you had consumed sufficient nutrients to meet your metabolic need, your insulin levels will be lower when you fail to meet that metabolic need through your consumption. That's under consumption. This still leaves times within the day wherein fat cells can release large amounts of fat molecules in the valleys between the insulin spikes from eating. Yeah, 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 but the ketogenic diet 
always has lower insulin, so the fat loss inhibition break is always off. That's true, but the absence of insulin does not immediately mean there's a stimulation of the release of fat molecules from the fat cells. That's why it's important to look at more than just one metric to understand the physiology. In a ketogenic diet, insulin is low, but that ignores other factors and focuses on this one hormone. And albeit an influential hormone, it isn't the only player. There are others, like insulin's little brother, acylation stimulating protein that can play a role in fat physiology. In the bigger picture, if you consume mostly fat, your cells do end up switching their metabolism to using more fat than glucose, carbohydrates, for the production of their necessary cellular energy. However, since you are consuming much more fat in your diet, most of that fat metabolism is sourced from your diet, not your fat cells. That said, the same rules apply. So if you are under consuming nutrients, in this case fat nutrients, necessary to generate the energy needed for your body cells, metabolism dictates the situation. So fat molecules will also be released from your fat cells. Is this mediated by the lack of insulin? Well, sort of, it is permissive by low insulin, but other factors aside from insulin have to also be permissive or stimulatory. Ultimately, this means that insulin plays a role, but it isn't accurate to simply pin all of the body's fat loss physiology on insulin alone, which leads to the incorrect conclusion that you can't lose body fat eating carbohydrates, and this is evidenced through fat loss in opposite nutrition styles, a high carbohydrate diet or a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, simply through different means that include insulin in different ways. This means that the ketogenic diet is a great diet for fat loss, for more reasons than what we outlined here, but a high carbohydrate diet can also be effective for fat loss. And with that, I hope this proved informative and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the near future. Cheers.